It started with a plan. So I had a bounty placed on my head due to having a slight <laughs> misunderstanding with the holy nation. However, Kiaku had no bounty. This is big brain time. In my infinite genius, I decided I would use Kiaku to turn in Soak. Yeah, divine blessings to you as well, my friend. The plan was foolproof. Kiaku would hand over Thok. We would collect our 16,000 cats, and we would ride off into the sunset with a load of cash. We just needed to talk to the Inquisitor, but there was a slight problem. Woman has no place in the Inquisitorium. Oh no! Yes, I had forgotten one of the most important characteristics of the Holy Nation, that they are misogynistic fuckheads. But in a moment of pure desperation, I decided to put Thok in the cage anyway. Give me the money! But there was no way around it. The sexist pig wouldn't give me the cash, and Thok was stuck in prison again. Ah oh, shit, here we go again. Well, that didn't work. We were currently in Blister Hill, capital of the holy nation. And as Thok was public enemy number one, we needed to get the fuck out of here. Fogman and cannibals didn't seem particularly inviting, so I decided we would try and hoof it over to the United Cities. However, <laughs> look at this guy limping. Oh, oh shit, oh. You, Outlander, come speak with me at once, you. You're no a granite. What reason would an unholy woman have to creep around holy nation territory? Did the agents of darkness send you, heretic? This is obviously very bad. There was one Kiaku and 13 of them. Oh, oh fuck it. Burn away their sins. It looked like Kiaku was gonna get away. However, there was still one Inquisitor chasing her, like the T-1000. I needed to lure him towards someone who could potentially outrun him. Look at me, look at me, look at me! But somehow this very athletic Inquisitor was keeping up with Thok. But there was no way around it. We were going to have to regroup and take him on. KO. And here it was, on the sidewalk of Kenshi civilization, that Thok and Kiyaku slowly bled to death. But wait! Thok was actually alive, but extremely crippled. When is Thok gonna catch a break? Huh? Oh my god, look at the shuffle! With Kiaku unconscious and Thok walking around like Tiny Tim, it was gonna take us a century to reach our destination. Well, on the plus side, he is actually now getting stronger, as I planned previously. But finally, Kiaku regained consciousness, and it was time for the old switcheroo. As Thok was slower than the plot of Final Fantasy XIV, Kiaku had to shoulder the burden. Listen, I tried Final Fantasy XIV, okay? The cat people awoke something within me that I didn't like. We just had to get through this holy nation checkpoint, and we were on the home straight. Blessings upon you, sister. Just be cool. Smile and wave, boys. Smile and wave. And finally, we were out. We were free from the tyrannical clutches of the Holy Nation. Now, we just needed to not get killed on the way to Heng, where we could hopefully find some work and not homicidal bigots. Okay, maybe we should uh, switch this around. Kiako has been uh, carrying Thog for absolutely ages. Oh my god, he's still hobbling so bad. The Great Desert was a cruel mistress. She was hot, dry, sandy, deserty. It basically wasn't cool. We traveled until we came across a group of smelly homeless people fighting some giant insects. And after the horrible bugs had eviscerated them, we hung around like the vermin we are. Because you know what time it is. So 
So whilst Kiyaku was mercilessly looting the dead, I turned my back for like two seconds. And Thok has been absolutely annihilated. Folk, Folk, how did this happen? So after Thok gets up, I have this other genius idea that I would patch up this bandit to full health, thinking he might be eternally grateful and join me in the band of the rat. But when is the last time things went according to the plan? Never, never is when. To repay Kiyaku's kindness, he decided to attack us. Thok shuffles in from the rear to assist. Bandit with broken arm, dodges every single hit like he is Neo from the Matrix. Nah, fuck this man, I've got a bow. She just shot Thok in the back! But thankfully for us all, this giant insect came over and devoured him. We were once again back on the road. We finally made it to Heng, home of the Traders Guild. And while Kiyaku went and surveyed the town, I sent Thok to stare at a wall so he couldn't get into any trouble. Whilst at the town, we bought some supplies, got gangbanged by a hundred people, Carried out some manual labor, but god damn it, this was a sucker's game. We were still poor as fuck. We needed a money making plan, a plan so easy that even Thok could do it, which is when I heard about a little thing called hashish. Now, apparently, the hive loved nothing more than smoking the herb and would gladly sell it to anyone, making them very based. The new plan was thus we would make the arduous and treacherous journey southwest to the swamp, where we would stock up on shitloads of drugs and then track east to sell them to the cool dudes at Flats Lagoon. So on the way to make our fortune, we hit the road once again. And you know what? We got there with no problems. Oh my god, what is that? It's eating them alive! 